Hello everyone, welcome to the stream for unboxing this portico. Hope everyone's having a good day today. Please uh, let me know if there's any problems with the audio or the video. And we'll get started in just a little bit. Yes, this is the GMMK Pro. I've been using it mostly because I've been too lazy to bring out any of my real keyboards. But I'm testing out the new, new, uh, new to me, JWK Lite tactiles. Um, I'm really liking them so far. I'll have to see if they're really worth it over something like Gateron Browns. What kind of tape is this on the box? I don't really know. Box tape. Um, Alright, let's get started. So for background, I did purchase this with my own money as, um, as usual. And I ordered this late January 2021. And the estimate was Q1 2021, you know, uh, they say March. 2021, but I actually got it just a couple days ago, which makes it mid-May. Um, I'm not too concerned about the delays because, you know, a bunch of stuff went down during this time. So uh, the Kara, for example, is also as late as this and all that. This is um, $119 and shipping to New York was $15. And there was also an optional key set that's for $35 that I didn't get. For reference, the NK95 was $95. Sorry, NK65 was $95. And the shipping for that one was $10. So we're looking at roughly $135 versus $105. So about a $30 difference, which, uh, you know, when you get down to this level of budget, does actually make a big difference. So well, let's get into it. The, the box itself, this is not the ex exterior box. Um, this is the only piece of anything on this very nondescript box. You know, I can't even read what color it is. The only hint I get is the sort of product number that has mint on it. with a nice little carrying case nothing else in the box it's quite black uh, it's more black on camera than it is in real life on camera it kind of looks like Vanta black but how can I show the sheen on it it's not a super premium uh, exotic color finish like it shows on camera for reference, the MK65's case is like this. The portico is a little smaller, smaller footprint. The portico has a little handle. MK65 doesn't have a handle. And that's that. Okay, this is very similar to what we saw in the NK65. You have this uh, coiled cable. I'm not really a big coiled cable kind of person, but the, the coil here is not super neat. I know the coil nerds care about that, but I sort of care about whether or not the coil is actually functional. 
and the stiffness of the coil is such that it does seem like it would be functional as opposed to the NK65's coil which is much stiffer if you can tell here like it'll retract tightly while the particles kill is more sort of soft I don't know what it is but this cable does feel a little cheaper maybe it's lighter I'm not really sure Right. And accessories, you got uh, this looks like maybe bump on. Well, these are two bump ons for something, and I think these standoffs for are for between the plate and the PCB. And two very long gold screws. There's one stray. Stand off here. Another thing is a bunch of gasket material foams. Oh, why? Why are there just kind of screws sitting in the case? And you have the stabilizers, which they describe as being from Equals C3. So these are. I guess you can say brand name stabilizers. And we have the keyboard proper. It's very light. Sorry. I've positioned the microphone a little bit in an awkward place. Oh, there's a screw that just came loose. Oh, that must be one of the standoff screws here. Oh yeah, this one is really loose too. This is probably gonna fall off. So it looks like the standoffs are already installed. So this stuff looks like it's just replacements, which, you know, I like to see. Because you know, you know in this stream I'm going to drop one of these screws and it usually takes me like 50 minutes to recover them. Alright, let's get into the keyboard itself. This is just a sticker, it's not, you know, a weight or anything. I mean, that would be crazy. The keyboard itself, uh, very light. The finish seems pretty much compar comparable to NK65. The shape is one of these guys, box on a wedge with an uh, angled rear. You can sort of see the finishes characteristic. There is a band down here that's a little, maybe a different texture than the rest of the board. I don't know if you can see that there's a little inconsistency in finish here. There's a little line. In the back, I'm not seeing much in flaws, and of course, centered USB port. It's a little bit off center on the port cutout, but that's probably okay. Maybe it'll change after installation. I don't think there's a film on this logo. It looks a little... I don't really like it. There's there's a... under light, there's a protrusion or something here. Maybe... There's a sharp piece under... underneath, but... I mean, I don't really care. It's got Phillips head screws, so let's get right into the case. Overall, the finish seems to be more or less uh, same league as NK65.
Maybe the NK65 is a little more uh, scuffed, generally. Lots of scratches and marks on that one. Oh, someone's saying there is a film, but it is hard to get off. Then I guess I'll get it off in the video. Mine came with a plastic peel over the badge. Let me just take a look real quick. Oh, I see. Alright. Money shot. Not that satisfying. The screws definitely seem way nicer than what you see on the NK65. They aren't furniture screws, uh, they're machine screws. Yes, I agree, it's a D tier pe peel. Wow, this is just so light. It's about the same amount of rigidity as the NK65's bottom shell. It's a little thinner and has maybe less complexity, but that's okay. Much like the NK65, it's got this silicone slab. Unlike the NK65, it seems to have much less material in on account of these hexagonal uh, indents as you might call them. It's it's weighty, but not that weighty. It, it's not a surprising amount like it was on the NK65. Good to see quality screws being used, I agree. The NK65 screws, I, I damaged several of them already. Or I damaged the screw holes, rather. Um, I will not boil Portico. Did I get the caps? I didn't. Does it scratch easily? If it's the same material as the NK65, it will scratch easily. Oh, jeez. More screws falling out. Alright, I'm just going to take these standoffs off. There's another one here. Generally, I don't like using PCB. Oh, jeez, PCB, PCB to plate standoffs because, I mean, I still haven't verified this, but it seems to create hot spots. And you know, why even bother? Can you build this without the standoffs? I, I will do that. Okay, standoffs. They're very loosely fitted. Um, pretty interesting PCB shape here. It's got, uh, what do you call it, a cut right in the aerof locker. I'm not seeing much, anything interesting here. You have the side RGB LEDs. Um, all around the perimeter and it's got proper facing switches um, per key RGB. The one note on their product page is that the RGB is not individually addressable so I think that's kind of strange. And just plain white PCB. And we got this felt here. This is pretty similar to the stuff I found inside the iQnix A80. I'll, I guess I'll need to do some verification as to uh, if it does anything. When I was taking it apart, it didn't seem to have a lot of compression between between the two pieces. So 
I mean, not that that really matters in the case of plate foam, but something to note. And the plate itself is FR4, interestingly. Um, the NK65 is an aluminum plate. This is FR4, so the same material as the PCB. And you can see the switch cutouts are plated purely for aesthetic reasons. And another interesting thing about the plate is that these uh, tabs for the gaskets, they have these cuts. So essentially you're reducing the, the point of hardness to this one point rather than spreading it out across the plate. It'll be hard to verify this because I don't actually have an FR4 plate for a gasket mount board that looks like this. This is the Vega. And while the, the gaskets on the Vega I put on the case, these are the wings, the gasket wings. So you can see they're much longer and makes much more contact. So it'll be interesting to see if it makes any difference. What is the MCU on the PCB? Let me give it a real quick look. Pretty hard to see. It's the Atmega 32U4. The USB-C is so poorly soldered on, super flimsy. I'm not really seeing anything of note here on the USB. It looks about the same to me. I don't know. Detach a cable. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll have to see if anything like that happens to me. I seem to have usually pretty poor luck when it comes to keyboard durability. So if there indeed is a problem, I'll most likely encounter it. So I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to be modding these stabs because I do want to know if they improve well. And I, I don't want to use stream footage inside my video. You don't like polias? I thought they were pretty okay. Uh, they're a little little too tactile for me still, but it, it's not obnoxious like Celios or Royals. C3 stabs are rattly F stuck. Good to know. I guess you will have to bear with me. There will be a separate review video, but I'm kind of bored with these uh, budget boards. So, I might review some old stuff I have laying around because I want to get rid of them. Stuff like TX75. Wait, what? Is this some kind of new technology? The stabs are. They have this overhang on the wire cut up, probably to prevent wires from popping out, but it makes it a little bit difficult to put the wires in. Okay, it's in. Oh wow, that's gonna be really readily. Sorry. Oh, Portico was also designed by C3 equals. Interesting, I didn't know that. The stabs look cheap, but work well. I don't know if they look cheap. I, I like the wires. The, the housings themselves look a little, feel a little sus, but I think they'll be okay. They feel light, you know what I mean? Not that I keep track of, I, not that I can tell you exactly how much cherry stabs weigh, but something about them. Will you use the C3 stab pads? 
uh, why not? I think uh, it's hard to know if I'll use the these stabs when reviewing. I probably should. And then maybe as a part of the review, I will also use what I usually use, which is GMK. Or old GMK before they became garbage. Aren't they made of palm instead of nylon? No idea. I'm just so behind on some of these meta material stuff. They all seem like snake oil to me, so I don't really follow it. So are the stab pads just supposed to go right underneath the inserts? Just right here? The, the stab kit comes with a 7U wire in case you wanted to use this kit with a different board, which I appreciate. How many pre-tooled GMK stabs do I own? I don't know. 20? Okay, these aren't cut super well. They're cut all the way through, so it's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, I'll skip them for now. Did your screws and standoffs fall off as well in, on opening? Yes, it did. I don't wonder what the best stab mod is, kind of not feeling. Yeah, I hate modding stabs. I was thinking about making a stab modding guide where the primary focus is to avoid getting lube on your hands. But TLDR for that is going to be just to use a curved syringe. I've seen, I mean, I've seen people use syringes more and more, but where I got the idea from was back when EK keyboards was a thing, they sold this product called EK Mech Loop 2, and they came in syringes. And I was a big fan of that application method, so I just inject it right into the stab housing, and if I'm careful enough, I can get away with not getting any lube on my hands. Why not just wear gloves? Because you wear gloves and you get the lube on your gloves and then you start touching other stuff like your like your PCB. And then your PCB has lube on it. And then the next time you do something to the PCB, now you got lube on your hands and it's just ugh. Gross. You don't need to buy syringe tubes from keyboard vendors, just buy from Amazon. I got like 10 from 10 for, I don't know, four bucks. I always speed run my builds on stream. I really appreciate the inclusion of the replacement gaskets because these are, in my experience, just really fragile and they rip really easily, especially if you're trying to you know, take them apart, which I guess is even less of a risk here because they're, they come pre-installed. So I appreciate that. The lube comes in tubes. I, I just use super lube and just stick them in the tubes and now have an, now I have four lifetime supplies. As always, get on yellows, stock. And I will be using the, f the plate foam because they typically don't have any impact on the typing feel. I did already peel off my back batch film. 
Uh, someone asks, Ben Hansen asks, uh, what do I think of Rama boards? I really liked the M60A uh, in terms of how it looks, but M65B, the U80, they're not really speaking to me. Also the M60A, I really dislike how it feels. So I ended up just getting rid of it at some point. But if there's a revision of the M60A design that uses a different mounting mechanism, then I'll be all over it. Roma boards seem a little expensive though, and their group eyes take friggin' forever. Um, their, my most recent purchase from them would be the Kara, which hasn't shipped yet, but Kara's like $180, $170. And that's before you add the internal dampener. So I, when stuff like the GMMK Pro exists, it seems a little hard to justify. I want to go in. What do I think of top mount? I think top mount works well for boards that are about 75% sized. Because otherwise, uh, on five column boards like 60 and 65%, the, the standoffs, in my experience, the standoffs are not far away enough to provide sort of the bouncy feel that I expect from a polycarbonate plate. Um, but on a TKO, like I found on the ADEX Mark II, that those standoffs are far enough to provide quite a bit of bounce, and I really like that. So I like top mount, but only when it's a soft plate like polycarbonate, and only when it's uh, more than five columns, so with an EFRA. I'm having trouble inserting these switches. It's probably because they've already been soldered. I just have a hard time believing Kara is going to be almost double the price, double the good as NK65 or the Portico. It's like you got injection molded plastic and you know how much better could it be? But full judgment will be issued when I have the board, which is any day now. I've been seeing people getting their shipping shipping notices. Thanks for tuning in, Fizz. I had to edit my order to include the internal foam because initially I thought it would be included. So maybe it got lost in their order management system. If it doesn't come in the next couple of weeks, I'll reach out to them. It's not like I'm dying to see what it's all about anyway. Kara typing feel is really great. I will be interested to see. I have some sus switches. I've been getting requests requests for the KBT67 light so much. And I didn't buy one because the drop happened in on Thanksgiving Day, and I wasn't about to be a turbo nerd and drop everything while cooking to buy a stupid keyboard.
The switches seem to fit into the PCB just fine. And I do like the way the the, the cutout plating looks. All right, that's done. The most excruciating part of the stream, as always. I like how these fit into the slots. Is there an alignment pin? There isn't an alignment pin, so it just kind of... It is free to sort of shift back and forth, but it's pretty clear where you should align, so I don't think that would be a big problem. Oh, one thing I forgot to cover is that big, big, big advantage to the portico is going to be the metal inserts on the top case instead of just raw dogging the, the polycarbonate material like the NK65 does. I, I make the other streamers look slow. It's because I'm not building a good typing experience. Takes me at least double to build a board that I actually use. Uh, the Kara was one hundred seventy dollars. If I'm remembering correctly, it was one hundred seventy dollars before shipping, before the internal dampener. And this is $115, right? No, it's $119 and I paid $15 in shipping. Reports of input lag, that's no good. I don't know if I can review the IDB60 because the guy who made it chats on the same Discord I chat on. So I mean, if we're on, on friendly terms, obviously I can't say anything about it. Conflict of interest and all that. Carl was 160. My mistake. The only thing about the Kara, in terms of price, is that it's more expensive than the GMMK Pro, which I think is ridiculous. I'm not worried about Pingu uh, being mean to me. I'm just worried about whether or not I will have, I will be able to say what I want to say about the board, since we're on friendly terms. Bova U4Ts, I haven't tried them yet. Kara is selling for 260. That's ridiculous. People need to get a grip. Is Portico good for nuclear codes? Highly recommended. What kind of switches would you use on something mission critical like that? You probably want a covered switch, like in planes, and maybe really heavy ones. That's also clicky, perhaps. Or T U. Fortnite stream when? I will not be doing a Fortnite stream. Car is sold for 350. Oh my god. That's that is absolute bull.
I'm not gonna review the Bakaneko because uh, Cannon Kitties is now on my personal blacklist. All right, built board. Here we go. Looks okay. I mean, <laughs> clearly not the best choice of keycaps. It doesn't work at all. But this is this is the easiest one to get the exact layout of because I had it on the Space sixty five. Um, impressions built is that it's still really super duper light. I'm feeling it between the NK sixty five and this just feels much much lighter just for reference this is the NK65 fully built Gateron Yellows GMK 842 grams and the portico is 686 grams so that's actually a pretty significant weight difference here if you care about that this definitely feels a lot lighter and I assume it has to do with the aluminum plate and I think the probably the more substantial silicone uh, dampener thing inside. What about the Phantom 65? All I've heard about that is that the group buy is sus or something. I'll uh... I'm, I mean I'm not really buying keyboards right now. What are tactile equivalents to Gat Yellows? If you mean the equivalents as in switches I like, that's going to be just Gateron Browns. Um, let's see. Okay, now let's do a quick little sound test. Let me set up the desk mix. Me two desk mats, and uh, let me reposition the mic to face the keyboard. And the NK65, just for a point of reference. Reset the mic. All right, so impressions are that there is a significant difference as for typing feel when it comes to this versus the NK65. 
I guess that's to be expected. Different plate material, first of all, and different mounting uh, mounting style. The the bottom mount is slightly softer, not really noticeably so. There's a little bit of vibration transfer from one hand to the other, and the sound is definitely changed. This is definitely a plasticky sound versus the clacky sound on the NK65. Um, just just uh, from this alone, I would much prefer using this over the NK65, which I mean, I guess I could have seen coming. Uh, let's see. NK65 has way more thock. Uh, <laughs> I will not be addressing that. Spacebar sounds good on the portico, clacky. Um, both stock yellows. Yeah, they're they're exactly the same. Portico sounds better. I like the sound of the NK65 better, more thocky, which I liked. Oh my god. Petition to ban the word thock. Let me see how much sort of flexibility is going on here. Uh, keep in mind this is not like a real test. It doesn't really show you anything other than maybe comparatively between boards. Yeah, I, okay. It's fine. Oh, underglow. Um, let me try plugging it in. I usually never do this. Special treat. Uh, first of all, not properly resist, so that's strike one. As for underglow, uh, doesn't look great. Eh, not a fan. Um, the per switch or uh, LED you probably won't be able to see because um, I'm using OPEC switches. Let me try turning off the light. Wow, you really can't see anything, huh? Alright, let's see. Not really an impressive effect, to be honest. There's such a hot spot on every one of these LEDs. Not a fan. I think I'd probably just use it without it uh, on at all. Well, the power box for my overhead light is extremely hot. Very concerning. Yeah, the LED, honestly, kind of ass. I <laughs> would probably turn them off. The USB port, uh, come on, dude. Does nobody watch my videos? Can we resist these? Um, oh, one, one thing I noticed here. When I was trying to uh, disassemble this, I felt that this USB port was getting caught on the top case. And if you can see, it'll actually bottom out on this top case. Uh, whether or not in normal typing you'll feel this is debatable, but I guess it might be a little too much to ask for daughter board at this price point, but it's whatever. All right, what else? C to C connection work. Um, Hmm, I don't have a C2C cable right now. Let me see if I can find one real quick. Alright, this is a legitimate C2C cable from Anchor, not, not sus, sus custom keyboard makers. 
I'm plugging it into my laptop, which I have here. And plug it in. Will it work? It works. Sorry. RGB works. Works fine. I think we're having less of a problem with this nowadays. Is there anything else to be said about this? My paper says 7 degrees typing angle, uh, FR4 plate, not individually addressable RGB, stabs from C3 equals, or C3 equals is the stabs? Is C3 part of the equals name? Unclear. Let's see, any creaking? Not really. It is able to sort of bend, but I mean, who's doing that other than me? It's whatever. Um, C3 equals one word, got it. Okay, so I think that sort of wraps it up. Let me just give you the overall impressions for anybody who was late. This is $119 before shipping. Shipping was about $15 to me. Uh, I'm in New York. And it was through UPS pretty quick within the week. I like that there are uh, metal inserts in the case rather than uh, self-tapping screws going straight into the material. It is going to be much better for longevity. And that's actually a real concern because my NK65 already has several stripped holes. Um, the overall quality of the exterior is, I mean, it's injection molded plastic, so it's not going to really deviate much from how good it could be. But it seems like it's a little better than the NK65, generally speaking, um, looking translucent case to translucent case. The typing feel is, I would say, does the sort of gasket mount name justice, I think. Uh, it's not like a fake one as it was on the D65, which was way too stiff. The FR4 plate is kind of nice and I assume it's nice for TKC as well because I assume it's cheaper than aluminum and the the assembly experience was pretty good the standoffs falling off was kind of janky but I wasn't going to use them anyway the stabs seem like they might improve well one thing I noticed was that one side of each of these stabs are already rattle free uh, even when there's no lube added to it as for the typing feel, it's got a sort of soft bottom out, but not overly so. Uh, not it, it, There's a little bit of vibration transfer from one hand to the other, but I'm thinking maybe a lot of that gets uh, dampened by the foam strips. The sound, you know, these are stock at Agnola, so you can go so only so far, but it is quite a bit different than something with a metal plate and a hard mount like the NK65. And, you know, just from this first look, I think I would pay the extra, what's it, $25 for the portico every single time. I know TKC can be a little sus <laughs> with their fulfillment and overall customer satisfaction, but I think this is much more of a enthusiast keyboard than the NK65 ever will be. Is it, uh, I couldn't tell you if it's worth keeping Oh, anyway, um, that's my impressions. I guess we'll do maybe five or ten minutes of questions. Uh, Jason Lee asks, is it worth keeping the stabs or just swap to Dorox? I don't really know. I haven't lubed these, but 
uh, my hunch is that they'll improve well. So far, would you recommend not using the standoffs? I don't know if I could recommend either way because <laughs> it's been just such a short period of time and I haven't tried it with the standoffs. I'll do that for the regular, uh, what was it, the, the real review. Um, oh yeah, good point. Um, these are screw and stabs, which is just um, better than the plate mount stabs. Not that plate mount stabs can't be good, it's that there's just m many more, uh, much more options for PCB mount when it's supported. I think NK65 should at least support it like the GMMK does. Is there a lot of flex? I, I mean, if I do this, you'll be able to see the assembly move up and down, but that doesn't really tell you anything. In terms of typing feel, it seems to be sort of what you expect from a bouncy or a flexible experience. I didn't see how the smoke particles came out. I request taste test. I mean, it's plastic. Doesn't taste like anything. Congratulations. Oh, wait a second. There's like a bitter aftertaste. Maybe they got the Nintendo Switch game cartridge treatment. Um, in case sounds better, I disagree. Please, what is the flavor? <laughs> what is my main board? I, I've been using the GMMK Pro not for any other reason than uh, I already had it out and built. Did this board surprise me? Um, not really. <laughs> Uh, I guess their fulfillment wasn't as bad as it could have been, uh, given what happened with PVT Islander, <laughs> getting getting most of a shift by air and like half of a shift by boat because they didn't know, and then they didn't know which boat it was on, and it's really big mess. Uh, the clear one is more diffused. Okay, bitter tasting gasket, so hot. Any more mods? Uh, I won't be doing any mods until uh, after the review. I, I do need to take a look as is. Lifestyle question. Is it worth blowing my money repeatedly on entry price boards 100 to 300 or is it worth the expensive premium stuff? Uh, that really depends. You should get what um, makes you happy. I think, personally, most people would probably be happy and end game on the GMMK Pro. I don't, but I don't think most people would end game on an entry level plastic keyboard. Uh, this build is uh, just stock Gateron yellows, unlubed. What's my setup with GMMK Pro? I'm using uh, aluminum plate because the PC plate is warped and uh, what is it? Gateron yellows on all the keys except the 27 alpha plus space bars. Uh, those are going to be JWK light tactiles. GMMK Pro makes me makes you happy. GMMK Pro makes one happy, potentially. Makes me happy? I don't really know. It doesn't really spark joy. Do I think the Tofu line of keyboards are starting to become irrelevant? I'm not familiar with their pricing but it might be. Am I tired of the KVD67 light question yet? I mean, you guys are really just telling me to do it, but I don't know. I mean, <laughs> these are all boards that I'm not going to use, and I never turn a profit on these, on these uh, videos anyway. Good Tate in switches. A witches. JWK light tactile review coming soon. I would like to cover it, but maybe not soon. I don't know. What's been sparking joy for you lately? Uh, you know, playing Fortnite probably. My JMMK Pro PCB came warped. Is that common, guys? The PCB warp. I did, I haven't seen. I've seen people talk about PCB warp. And I'm wondering if it's just the, the polycarbonate plate, because w wouldn't it just kind of even out when you're using an aluminum plate? 
face test on switches. These are really grody. They've been built and unbuilt dozens of times. They taste a little rubbery. The nylon top tastes a little rubbery and the uh, the black bottom uh, is, a, is a little tart. Overall pretty neutral. What kind of switches can you see shining in this board? Uh, I think probably get on yellows. Will I try KTT? I don't really know what they are, but maybe, hopefully. And do I have a Discord? Yeah, I do have a Discord. Um, it's linked in most of my regular videos at the very bottom of the description. I'm not gonna taste test the solder. I'm not. I didn't get PNC Lite because I was one of the original buyers of uh, Peaches and Cream, and PNC Lite. Just the fact that it's running is a slap in the face to all the original runners. So, um, I mean, that's what that's what got Canon Keys on my blacklist. Uh, just a couple more questions before we go. Unlooped Gatter Yellows are not my favorite switches. I just use them because they're linear, they're cheap, uh, they're repeatable, readily available, etc. How are you able to afford all the boards you've purchased so far? Last time, last I heard you had 30, 40 boards to be built or something. Oh, that that's not true. It's 30, 40 maybe total. And a lot of them, a lot of that count uh, includes uh, weird stuff like old G80s that should be thrown away. <laughs> flex test? Keep in mind this flex test doesn't really mean anything. I mean, who's typing like this? What's the deal with PNC? Um, eh. Progressive springs. I'm. I haven't really been in the spring market. Um, I've mostly stopped replacing parts on switches because they just seem like way too much of a hassle. And also, too much of the spring market is sprit, which is also on my blacklist for maybe more obvious reasons. Thoughts on people joining unlimited group buys to resell after, bad or good? Uh, neutral, I guess. I mean, I'm not gonna like them. I, do I, will I, will I want to be friends with these people? Probably not, but... I mean, argument is you could have bought it. What is my main job other than YouTube videos? I don't see your videos getting that many views, so it leads me to believe you don't use YouTube as your main income source. That's correct. I make pretty much no money on YouTube. I just I'm a I'm a programmer full time. What's the lowdown? It's a it's a good board. I mean NK65 killer. I think it was already dead. <laughs> uh, is is this the cheapest? Is it cheaper than the KBD67 Lite? If the 67 Lite is the same experience, then uh, this and that is going to be my new sort of entry level recommendation. If you can't spend GMMK Pro money, um, I would say just don't buy NK65 Entry Edition. So I just want to address the PNC thing. It's not even the main issue, isn't that Peaches and Cream was different from the renders. That happens, and I've sort of dealt with that before. It's that, you know, you got a failed project, and now you're trying to run the corrected version. And I mean, if you're not going to replace everyone's uh, R1 PNC with these corrected versions, then that's just going to be a slap in the face for everyone. 
is it's it's basically correcting your mistakes at the expense of the buyers and that's not something i can support so rinsuya and canon keys are banned KBD67 is 110 USD. Uh, okay. Uh, Kara, I think, is too expensive, but we'll see. I didn't get the AK68. Uh, I haven't gotten into playing Apex. Any other weirdos here who like 65% without the blocker? That's me. Uh, how off was PNC? It was. It was pretty off. It was like neon orange. What happened with the keycap set? Oh. Uh. There's some discussion out there, I think. If you if you go on any of the group eyes, um, group eye posts on Reddit, there that wasn't a giveaway post that floods the comment. There's gonna be people who pointed out the issue. You can read it there. Uh, NK65 layout has the one U keys, and I don't prefer that. I do prefer the uh, having two 1.5U. That would be good. And I do prefer having 6.25U space. Favorite layout is probably 65%. Okay, I think uh, I think we should probably get to wrapping up. I'll take one more question. Uh, the Scarlet TKO by Maker. I haven't. I have heard of it a lot. It's cheap. Is that it? Um, not really interested in buying. Thoughts on split back split backspace? Uh, seems fine. I used to do it, but then I reverted because I stopped caring. Uh, and with that, let's wrap wrap up the stream. Uh, the review on this coming probably not soon. I don't know if I'm even going to do the review before I get to the the Kara versus Portico versus NK65 stream or not stream, um, comparison um, It's an okay keyboard Don't buy it for more than MSRP, please It's not worth that um, If you want to get into the hobby, you should probably... It, this will be a good pick. If you don't want to get into the hobby and just want a nice keyboard, then this guy is my pick. Um, well, thanks everyone for tuning into the stream. I will have another stream coming up, probably not this week because I'm going to be busy at work, but maybe this weekend or next week. Uh, I bought another keyboard from iQnix because they had a cat themed one and I have tracking for that one. so. That'll be a pretty interesting, I mean, th that might actually spark joy. So we'll see about that. But thanks everybody for tuning in. I'll see you later.